Hello and welcome to Curdcast, the podcast for people who like to eat cheese. I am your host, Jen Mason, and with me today is the always fabulous Julie Faye Van Balzer. Hello, Julie. Hello, Jen. I'm so glad to see you on this lovely rainy July day. No, um, I'm just glad it's not like 100 degrees. I will it take is. some rain over the boiling hot weather we've been having. It has cooled it off. I, I always remember as a child going to Florida and actually looking forward to the, like the three in the afternoon um, rain that would hit if we were down at Disney World because it would immediately cool off. And if you're really smart, you would race to the lines and get there while everybody ran into the gift shop so that you would be the first in line. Smart. It's a fancy trick. Yeah. Uh, now I've told everybody, at least everybody <laughs> who likes cheese, that that's what we do. So um, today we're talking about our June box and Julie and I have in front of us um, our our tasty bits from um, our red wine and blue. I, I put mine on this cute little black tray that I've been wanting to, but it, like my mm -hmm. blueberries and cranberries disappear in this. So it's a magic plate. Um, yeah. So the theme of this month is red wine and blue. And if you've never joined us before, um, or if you haven't joined us in a couple months, you'll notice we now offer our podcast live as a video, well, not live, we're recording it live, but as a video. So, um, which means Julie and I have to not wear pajamas to the podcast. And um, mm. I even put lipstick on. I have so much lipstick because I haven't worn lipstick in like a year and a half because masks. But um, Red Wine and Blue is our Curd Box theme. And Curd Box is a cheese and pairing subscription that we send to your house once a month. And we have hundreds of you out there subscribing every month, hundreds and hundreds of you out there subscribing every month. And uh, it always tells a story and it all revolves around a theme. So this one revolves a little bit around the play on words, red wine and blue. And um, as I was saying at the beginning of the podcast, this is one that I've been wanting to do forever because cheese people are incredibly punny. I don't know if like, it should be like how we hire people for our store. Like, what would you what would you say if I said, come up with a title for this class? And if they don't come up with something punny, they probably don't have what it takes to make a cheese. Since, since you're all about cheese and pairings, really you should make them pair a pun, oh. with, right? Don't you think? That's fantastic. That's a fantastic idea. Hmm. All right. But so um, if you uh, don't have a box because you've never heard of Curd Box, you can subscribe at curdbox.com. But for the rest of us, um, or even for those of you who don't have a box, you can listen in. You can get similar types of cheeses. You can try this um, theme and, um, and see what you come up with on your own. But we have some delicious cheeses. We're going to start out with the, um, the unique EWE. N I Q U E, just because we needed to start the time off with a pun. Um, and this one is the um, Gouda esque. Yes. Um, so this is made in California. It's a sheep's milk cheese, Gouda style. Mm. It has like a salted caramel taste almost to it. It's Gouda. No, it's, it's very good. And it um, definitely feels salty. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of like, that's the first thing that hits me is the salt, mm -hmm. but it's much more mild than I normally anticipate from a Gouda. You know, I know some people find that Gouda can be like a very strong taste and even sometimes mm -hmm. even after taste. And this definitely feels much more mild. Yeah, this is, this is beautiful. And here's an interesting thing. This is a four month cheese. All of the cheeses we're tasting are right around the same age this time. Mm -hmm. So um, you'll get to sort of, I want, I, I encourage people as if they're eating along, to like think about that and think about how different cheese styles, even the same ages, can be really different. This is made by um, Central Coast Creamery. They used to have this made for them all, with their recipe in the Netherlands. And in, um, I think, 2018, they brought um, production here to the United States. Um, it's just a beautiful, it's a pasteurized um, Gouda style and um, vegetarian rennet, four months old and made in California. It's beautiful. And I think um, we tried to pick cheeses that would go with red wine, mm -hmm. but also you'll notice in our next cheese that had red wine helping to make them. Well, also I'd say the texture is really interesting for a Gouda because yeah. it feels a little more like crumbly grainy than yeah. it does that kind of like smooth, you know, I'm used to, I think a Gouda's that feel a little more. And I feel like sheep's milk as it ages, mm -hmm. sheep's milk cheeses, not just the milk. Um, we'll tend to get that saltier um, flavor. We've talked about that a lot. A sheep's milk offers and makes a saltier cheese. It's one of the reasons why 
probably if I had to pick one milk type that all my cheese would be made with for the rest of my life, if you made me pick, I would probably pick sheep's milk because I love salt so much. But Who I would have helped you make milk? me pick. So oh, that's lemon. I'm a happy girl. Yeah. <laughs> and actually the red wine kind of is like, you can add red wine and lemon in a lot of cases for the same kind of bringing mm -hmm. out of the flavor. Exactly, exactly. Which brings us to our next one, the Brio, Brio, my, my Italian is poor. I wanna make it um, Spanish double L's, but Brillo uh, Pecorino Divino. Um, and this is a sheep's milk cheese um, made more in the traditional Tuscan Pecorino style. You know, I never cut my cheese the same shape as you, and you always mm. cut like different fancy shapes, and I actually we did. We both had triangles this time. Oops, I broke off much. So this one, I don't know if you smelled this when you took it out of the packaging, but mm. this cheese is made, um, and... Um, Ooh, I can taste the wine. Mm -hmm. And when you open it, the package, you probably, like, there's a, a definite fruit essence to the, to the um, wine. It's so unexpected because I think of Pecorino or, and I just think of like putting it on my pasta and like, mm -hmm. it's like a flavor I'm very used to and it's mostly tastes like salt. And this is like, what is that fruity? Wait, it kind of is not fruity, but what is it? And then I was like, oh, it's wine. Yeah. So they it's make this one, they age it for about four months and then they put it in terracotta jugs of wine for about a month. And the very outer, I've pulled off the very, very outer edge of mine, mm -hmm. um, which is a film. It's it's non-toxic. Don't eat it, but it's non-toxic. But it still leaves a purple. I'm holding this up for those who are watching. It still leaves a purple rind behind. But the closer you get to that rind, the fruitier it's going to taste because, you know, it's it seeps in. So interesting. Mm. But it doesn't have an alcoholic taste. It has sort of that grapey no, but like, yes, but fruitier, not like raisin. It's yeah, harder. it's more like wine sometimes. Now, I'm not a wine drinker, and one of the mm -hmm. reasons is that I don't like the flavor of wine most of the time. <laughs> but like, when I describe the flavor of this, because I do like like fruit juices, mm -hmm. what's the difference? Is wine has bitter is the wrong way of putting it. I'm trying to think how to put it, but it's 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 like it's sweet but flat somehow. Mm -hmm. I definitely get that combination here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like when you smell a glass of wine and it smells fruity, when you taste it, it doesn't taste mm -hmm. the same way it smells. Yeah. yeah. I think this is a really, um, an interesting, an interesting way. And there's, there's a ton of cheeses that are soaked in wine or in wine musk, sort of like what's left at the bottom of the barrel with the, with the wine grapes. Um, drunken goat is like something you can get at ev almost every grocery store these days. But um, yeah, this one is really nice. It's kind of like the grown up version of that. But it's so we're looking at lots of things we can learn from this box. Our first two cheeses, both sheep's milk cheeses, both four months ish old, really like four to five months old. Um, you know what I like to do about the sorry about the wine being in it is that I almost feel like you know how sometimes when you drink wine you have like a warm feeling in your throat mm -hmm. afterwards like I actually feel a little bit of that from the cheese right now so it adds to I mean if we want to talk about like that sixth sense or whatever which is like the, mm -hmm. or the feeling of something or like mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? it's like I I feel something after eating that cheese yeah. I do just sort of eat it and it's like oh that was nice let's move on that's a really interesting point and one of the flavor profiles that we pair with cheese is umami and in the cheese world, we kind of think of that as like anything out of the ordinary. So if you make a short, a sweet shortbread cookie, but you put rosemary in it, that mm -hmm. kind of adds the umami, that sort of extra flavor. It is savory now, but it also is still a sweet cookie. This is cheese, but now it adds this extra flavor. So it definitely adds sort of that umami. Um, this reminds me of when in sixth grade, I brought in chocolates that I had made for everybody and I put a piece of pickle inside <laughs> And I called it bonbon surprise, and people were very super <laughs> used. Um, for all Curd Box um, subscribers, I promise to never put Julie's chocolate covered pickles in our box. Um, but first of all, I think they were cornichons, so they were like French, very intense, very French. Oh my gosh! Okay, so two sheep's milk cheeses, totally different, both about the same age. Now we can kind of go totally off and um and we've got a blue in here 
And this blue cheese is called Moody Blue. Um, oh, and I forgot, let me give you, let me, let me just give them everybody. So the, um, we talked about the other, the uh, Brio Pecorino, it's uh, four to six months. Um, this one was started by um, a group of young hippies in the in 1977 who wanted to build or, you know, start this um, commune place for helping people with disabilities, um, adults and children. And um, so really interesting. And this is from um, Tuscany. So um, I just thought that was a, an interesting little thing to add in there. Um, and uh, before we went on to our next one, which is an American made blue cheese called Moody Blue. Um, and this is made by Roth in Wisconsin. And um, it falls into our bold and blue category because it's blue cheese now. We are always very careful about the blues we put in our box. We know some people don't like blues. There's only three cheeses in the box. We want you to like all the cheeses. We think you'll love this cheese, but when we start pairing it, we think you'll love it even more. This is a very mild blue cheese. So if you haven't had a blue cheese or you've just had like lousy blue cheese dressing at a whatever restaurant. This has a kick. It's got a lot of flavor though, which I really like. It definitely has sort of an aftertaste and it's interesting because like it was kind of, I'm not going to say hard, but it is a little bit of a firmer blue cheese, mm -hmm. but mine's been out for about an hour and a half and it just melts in your yeah. mouth, which is actually very different than the two other cheeses, which are a little grainier. They don't quite yep. melt in the same way. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would love to have this on some toast. It would be, oh, yeah. this. It would be so great. And this is like lightly smoked. So if you smell this one, um, and when I took this one out of the, the wrappings, I like, I almost smell bacon because it's mm. lightly, lightly smoked over fruit wood. Um, and that's kind of giving you that like hickory smoked bacon, um, flavors. It's giving you some bacon notes there too, without having any bacon in it. Um, but it's a pretty mild, it's a really creamy and you're right. Like mm. fresh out of the fridge, this is cold and cr you can crumble it. Like if you were going to crumble this on a salad, I would do it right out of the fridge. If you try to crumble it now, you just have to lick your fingers off. Um, which is not a bad thing, but makes for a messy salad. But yeah, um, the vegan -y taste to it, it's almost like if you have, it feels like when you take a bite of like a salad that has like bacon and blue cheese and like mm -hmm. all those kind of flavors and that creaminess, yeah. of like a dressing. And like, it's really, it's surprising to me because sometimes the blue cheese just sort of slaps you in the face and this one doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's, so this is one of those that, um, I feel, I feel like our um, subscribers are going to feel brave about this. We have so many people who've been writing in. And by the way, if, if you are just listening to this podcast and you like it, or you're a subscriber, anytime you want to tell us how much you are liking things and what you like, and I'm not just saying that because we like to hear nice things. Um, it's great for us to hear what things you're liking in the box so we can do more things like that. So um, yes, we always love constructive criticism as well. But if you like something, let us know. You can go, you can email us at crew at curdbox.com and just say, this cheese was amazing. More cheeses like this. Um, your input really counts. Um, we absolutely love it when people write into us. Um, so please do. Um, so this blue cheese is going to blend. So we went from sheep to sheep to the same age cheese that has a little bacon taste to our maple bacon jam. Um, and this is sort of a, this is a cheat for this box. So red wine and blue, this, this jam um, is made by um, uh, Brownwood Farms and it is fantastic. Um, it's made with Great Lakes region apples, um, bacon, maple syrup, and it used to be made with Merlot wine. They have since pulled the Merlot out to make it nitrate free and they use a balsamic vinegar, but I'm saying that that's an even cheat because it's still using grapes. So you can fight me on that one, but I'm going to fall on this sword because this is so good. It and smells it so good that as I was trying to get closer and closer as I was sniffing it, I touched my nose. <laughs> You'll be smelling it all day. Mm, it has like a little piece of bacon I just got in my mouth. Mm -hmm. mm. Really good. I can't wait for you to try this with that blue cheese. This is so good. It's like sweet. Mm -hmm. But it definitely has that savory undercurrent. Super umami. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want this on like a toasted panini with some cheese and 
something cold to drink. It's really good. It strikes me like it, it has that. I mean, that it, it feels a lot like onion jam that I feel like mm -hmm. I've had before, or even like when you have French onion soup right. and the onions have been roasted down so far, it's really, I mean, that's why I feel like I can eat it with a spoon, but it's yeah. surprisingly sweeter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I think it's nice because unlike the onions, it's really getting that on, the onion jams that really get mm -hmm. the flavor from and the texture from um, onions that have been cooked down. Using the apples on this is kind of ingenious um, mm -hmm. because it's giving you this great texture, this almost chutney like texture. But um, and we're going to find this true in the next category, which is the um, our uh, Vincent Farms dried cranberries and um and blueberries that apples are like this magic thing that let us enjoy um, other foods in really spectacular ways. They are sweet, but they're also like a neutral. They're, like if I was painting a picture, an apple becomes this neutral that can really tie a lot of stuff together. So and I have to say I half the baby down. food that I feed my son is mixed with apple. It's like right. spinach with apple, mango with apple, everything with apple. Yeah, it's great. And then we grow up and everything is stretched with carrots, frozen carrots. <laughs> Mm, not my favorite. Um, so we can move on to our next thing. And we have dried cranberries and blueberries. So again, this is our blue, um, red wine and blue, red cranberries and blueberries. And what I liked about these. Oh my gosh, they're so much softer than I'm used to right? with my fruit. They're not like chewy so in a way. They infuse them with apple juice, unsweetened, mm. and then they dehydrate or dry them, not dehydrate and then they dry them. Mm -hmm. So they stay really moist. So here's the funny thing. As a child, um, my mom, mom, if you're listening, hey, um, all of our childhood vacations um, were driving in cars in the States, and we would tour factories, like fun things like Etch-A-Sketch. We saw how Etch-A-Sketch was made. But we went to Jiffy Mix, you know, the great makers of our uh, cornbread and they make a blueberry muffin. I don't even know if they still do. I only see cornbread in the stores now, but um, the blueberry muffins were actually not blueberry muffins. They were dried apples infused with blueberry juice because when you actually dry a blueberry, there's nothing left to it but the skin. So um, again, that great apple comes into play. It you think you're eating blueberries. I mean, if they think they look like they're little chopped up blueberries because they're, mm -hmm. they're not the size of a blueberry, but they're well, actually interesting. They actually kind of remind me of prunes when I eat them. Mm -hmm. Like you now prunes are kind of like sweet and they're still a little bit moist. Like they're not all dried out. Like this is, it feels, it tastes a little pruney to me. And yeah, and it has an intense flavor. Sweet. Um, but not like. Very sweet. You can't like just ignore it. It's like a good. You know, I think about like a raisin versus a grape. Yeah. Grape well, I mean, not like. to bring up everything about feeding my child, but I'm very aware of textures <laughs> while I'm feeding him. <laughs> and I've been giving him granola lately. And the granola that we have has dried raisins and cranberries in it. And it takes him forever to chew a cranberry or a raisin. <laughs> I am like, it's like five minutes between bites, right? And like, I feel like this is a very different thing because again, it has like a lot more juice. Yeah. Juicy is not the right word, but it just feels moist. Yeah. Soft yeah, and yeah. not like leathery. I was really excited when I found. So we do a lot of searching for products. I was looking for something in a blueberry. I didn't want fresh blueberries because they'd all be bad by the time you guys got them. And I was like, I just don't know if they make a dry blueberry. When I found these and asked for a sample and tried it, I was like, hooray, I can make this happen. Um, and so super excited about this. And I really like how it goes with the other cheeses too. And then we have one more to, thing to wrap into our board and they are these almondina bites. These are actually ancient grain blueberry almond bites. Um, they're like, oh, I hold, held up one that was broken. So they're these like little, I have to remember now that we're on, now we have video to hold things up. So these have blueberries in them. So our blue is, is in here as well. Um, and there's a lot of toast type crackers out there. This is gonna sound crazy. To mm -hmm. me, this is like when you are eating ice cream and you're eating the cone and the ice cream at the end, it 100% feels like that. I I can't believe it because they do not look like they're going to be like that. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah, they're super, super sweet. And here's the funny thing. They don't um, add any salt or fat to them. Mm -hmm. um, it's flaxseed, quinoa, blueberries, and almonds and the stuff that holds it all together. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, yeah, it does it's have that ice cream, ice cream cone sort of flavor, but not like over, it's not, it feels mm. naturally sweet, but you're like, this is what naturally sweet should taste like. Mm, 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 so mm, mm, good. Mm, All it needs is cheese on it. It's like a whole cheese plate with its nuts and berries. And um, so, yeah, I love this. So this a funny story. We've had them in before, and I don't think I told the story before. So um, Yuval uh, Zalik, Zalik, sorry, um, is an inf internationally known um, symphony conductor. And his grandmother made these and she would not give up the recipe until just before she passed. And he started a new career and makes these and his grandmother's name was Dina. So the company is Almondina named after his grandmother. Um, and so, you know, maybe there's some musical, maybe they play music for you. That's why they're so good. But I love hearing when like people switch gears and, and, you know, when it's a love or a passion or, or your grandmother's recipe. So, um, so thanks to Dina for, for giving us this recipe oh so that, hundreds and hundreds of people and are getting our curd boxes and are getting to try these today. I'm so sorry I put so few on my plate. <laughs> There's a big bag we gave you this time. I know. I'm going mm. back. So good. So now we have to pair. And um, I don't know where you're going to start, but I would suggest starting. And normally I don't say start with the blue cheese. Start with the blue cheese and almondina and the maple jam. The, Let's do it. The Let's take jam. a little uh, perfect little bite here. Be very, very, I'm being very generous with my amount of jam. <laughs> I'm going to be very generous here with the uh, amount of cheese too. Why not? You only live once, as they say. Mm -hmm. so. Well done. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. That is so. What? I like mm. it. It's so it good, so right? Good. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 It's fantastic. So I'm hoping, and and actually, mm. you guys, if you're listening to this and you try this bite and you're like, I don't like blue cheese and you eat this bite and you like, but I like mm. that bite, please tell me. That encourages me to help you try new cheeses that um, I think mm. are amazing like this. It just, that was this a mind-blowing pairing. Like it softened the blue cheese the sweetness of the cracker went to more savory. Like that was one of those totally transformative combinations. That was amazing. Yeah, I think this would make a beautiful, um, like if I had to bring an appetizer, like this might be what I would bring. Oh yeah. Just this with the, oh. So I think good. it would be so good. And they'd be gone in a minute. And I'm then the people who came say. late would be punished for not <laughs> Okay, I'm now going to try a bite of what was the first cheese that we ate? The first cheese is unique. The unique. I'm making a little sandwich with with a blueberry and a uh, cranberry. Mm. That's a nice sweet salty combo. And I could see that you could actually do like a toothpick of that if you wanted to put it out. Oh, yeah. That would you know be great. Be a nice little combo for people to just go ahead and grab. Yeah, it's interesting. What I found is, and maybe it's because I've been eating a lot of trail mix lately, but the saltiness of these two sheep's milk cheeses with mm -hmm. with the berries and then with the cracker, not necessarily all at the same time, really makes me feel like this is a cheese trail mix plate. Um, I get that. Interesting. I'm going to now uh, pecorino it with some onion jam and a blueberry topper. Nice. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. <laughs> Mmm, this jam, I'm gonna start rubbing it on myself. Yeah. It is good with everything. I cannot wait to make a sandwich. I'm putting this jam in it. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine, like you could cook meat of any kind. Mm -hmm. You can do chicken dress, you can do pork chop, you can do all sorts of stuff, put this mm -hmm. on it. Oh my God, with a steak, amazing. So good. Oh, oh my gosh, it's so good. I wonder if you could even like glaze sweet potatoes with it or something fun like that. Ooh. Oh, you know, stop thinking healthy, Jen. <laughs> I'm not thinking healthy. I'm thinking of all the things I can put it on. Okay. I've got it on all my meat. That's and fair. I'll put it on my potatoes. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So many good bites. This is one of those boxes where like everything is good, but together, even better. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it really is. It's just um 
<laughs> sometimes we do boxes for those of you who are new that, that everything goes well, but like some things go really, really well. One, I think this jam is the centerpiece because it plays nice with everybody and it is the um, combining factor. But I mean, these crackers, there's not crackers, the cookies, the almondina, the almond mm -hmm. bites, whatever we want, the magic crackers that these are. They remind me very much of Effie's, how they're sweet and savory at the same time, but they're thinner and more delicate than mm -hmm. that. And they kind of got, so there's a lot of people that are making toast and they, they definitely taste more like a cracker. And this reminds me of like just a very thin biscotti. You know, mm. like it's, it's more like the cookie, but because it's thin, it's not um, as hard as a biscotti. So that's kind of where I'm, but you're right. Like now that you've said that it tastes like an ice cream cone, I can't get past that. That's, it tastes like an ice cream cone. It's beautiful. Right? So. 100%. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm so in love. I cannot stop eating. I just want to eat everything. Excellent. Well, then I've done my job yet again. Um, we've got some more stuff planned for um, the rest of the summer. And um, you can go to our store's website, not you, Julie, you already know about this, um, at, at curdsandco.com. And we are taking a special trip to Sicily with only, we only, we need to have like spots for six more people for a beautiful food centric insider trip to Sicily. So if you've been feeling cooped up because of the pandemic, go to Curds and Co, spelled out C-U-R-D-S-A-N-D-C-O. Both businesses are uh, our, our sisters. Uh, I've, I'm the founder of both of them. And this is our way to invite both our, our people that shop at our shops and people that are part of our Curds, um, Curd Box. And it's going to be in October. It's 10 beautiful days in Sicily with the Sicilian uh, food and wine um, writer and distributor and his family owns a bunch of vineyards on Sicily. It's just going to be a most fantastic trip. So, um, so that's something that's coming up at the end of summer. Um, we are doing a special curated box with um, Food Network chef Justin Warner at the end of summer in September. So stay tuned, watch this, watch some old episodes, listen to older episodes. There's only two that we've got to watch. You can watch last month's with um, Net Food Network chef Michelle Ragusis as well. Um, if you want to follow Julie, you can follow her at what Julie ate um, and you can follow Curdbox at Curdbox and you can follow our um, some of our people in our box. The unique is made by at Central Coast Creamery, um, our um, moody blue delicious blue cheese is at Roth Cheese. The jam, and by the way, they make a lot more jams. So uh, if that jam is your jam, at Brownwood underscore Farms and Almondina. Thank you, Grandma Dina. Um, Almondina underscore Brand is their Instagram. Um, it is always delightful, Julie. I am so glad you like that bite as much as I did. I am so, I, I, I'm so always so nervous. Like I think this is fantastic, and and it's always lovely when it's when I, I I feel like the magic still works. So it's been great chatting with everybody here, and continue to have a lovely summer. We'll be back next month with our August box, and it's going to be pretty fun too. Always is. It always is. We love to do this. So um, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next month. Thanks, Julie. Bye. Bye.